Hi, I'm Mike Taylor with Innovative E. Have with me today, Matt Freilich. Hey, how's it going, guys? So a lot of times you talk about technology being kind of separate from the business needs, but there really is this intersection of kind of the biz Biz, business needs and biz tech and the the tech piece and how it enables technology. And that's kind of where we want to examine a little bit more in one specific area of the Microsoft platform today. And that is the uh, the introduction of Power BI Premium, which came on, what, about five, six weeks ago, Matt? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a little, it's been, it's been a, yeah, a bit more probably close to about six weeks, seven weeks, but it's, it's new-ish. It's new, new, what we're going to talk about is real new. And this, when I say Power BI Premium, it's actually the new licensing model that they have around it. Because Correct. why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of the history of uh, where Power BI um, came from and, and the, the premium model, and then why you're so excited about this this new version and the new licensing model. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. Thanks. Um, so Power BI, everyone has their, their, their Power BI desktop, whether they have Power BI Pro to publish stuff or not, you know. I know some organizations are still moving to that. Some people are, a lot of people are already on it. So you can have that dashboarding, that interactive component in the cloud. It's awesome. However, got a lot of people out there that are still trying to move to the cloud. And one of the big stumbling blocks is I got a SSRS report, a SQL Server Reporting Services report that sitting around. I need that paginated report. My executives or, or maybe this, a lot of them, right? <laughs> right. I need this pay, this this piece of paper sent to this person. I need it to be multi-page. I have sub reports that are just running on top of each other. All of that is is still a thing and it will continue to be a thing. So right. I want to say two years ago, maybe a little longer there was the introduction of Power BI Premium at as the a enterprise service. level, right? Right, at yeah. the service, at, as an enterprise service. And they have like five different tiers of it. It, it. It's great, but it's really geared towards a big organization. And that doesn't help the small organizations. I don't mean mom and pop. I mean, just people that are like, I got like 50 users that are running reports. Right. Or oftentimes it could be part of a large enterprise, but it can be a department. Like we do right. a deal a lot with like uh, project management offices, PMOs and things like that. And they may not have the enterprise licensing or, or be able to, you know, afford something like the, the more enterprise level type of thing. So they needed it more in a kind of the democratized Power BI licensing model, which was already available, like you mentioned before, kind of at the individual level for a certain amount per month. Right. And I think that's right. what this new licensing model does. Right. So the Power BI premium per user licensing mile is real, real new. Said we're we're talking in the weeks category. We're not talk we're not coming to you guys with six month old data. It's it's real new. I mean it's been it's been coming for a while, but it's it's real new in terms of what's there. And it's per user. So mm -hmm. you can buy five of them. Mm -hmm. You can have that. You can have five premium users and twenty pro users. You can mix and match. You can kind of do that type of thing where that gives you that flexibility for that. And because of that, you can set up workspaces in Power BI that are specifically geared towards premium, which allow both premium and pro to intermix. And then you could have just pro off to the side where those people can't get to that stuff. So to be clear, the, 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 you know, without talking exact numbers of what it was, it was in the tens of thousands of dollars per year for the Power BI premium oh, package, it, right? Minimum, yeah. minimum it was 4000 a month right. without any and, EA, any of that nonsense, right? It was 4000 a month, period, at the lowest level. No matter the number of users, it was just a, yeah. So, right. and, and now and they, the, they're, the Power BI premium with this new licensing model, it's, uh, I think, around $20 per person. Yeah, $20 per, month, right? per, per month, per, $20 per person per month compared to Power BI Pro, which is $10 per person per month, you get, a, you get a significant feature set. It will just, stuff will just port. I, mm -hmm. In fact, I moved a customer over, I want to say six weeks ago, or mm -hmm. no, four weeks ago, excuse me, where they had 10 SSRS reports. Mm -hmm. I changed the data source out, published them, and was done. And it, it was all worked. about, it was like just magic. about 10 minutes worth of work. Right, right. So this is really, so in our world, we do a lot in the project management space. We're doing a lot of migrations from project server to project um, project online, project in the cloud. So this is the exact scenario you're talking about where maybe a, a customer had all these SSRS reports to do, you know, uh, maybe it's timesheet reports, resource reports, all these different kinds of things that they developed and, and 
require the database, you no longer have access to that database. So what you need is to be able to do something like this from the cloud, and that right. solves that problem almost seamlessly, right? Right. Or your or your or the other thing is you're stuck with not having that paginated component or building a VM in Azure or leaving it on premise. So you have a couple right. of options still there, but they're not, they're not great, great options. Right. <laughs> and they're and, and building yeah. a VM in Azure is going to be more expensive. Oh yeah. Because it's a got... daily basis. It's always running. It's always there. This is just a service and it runs pretty, right. and, it, and it runs pretty snappy. I, I really, I'm really excited for it because it gets some of the paginated reports. I mean, even for us, we oh, have, yeah. We have paginated reports that we send to our customers. I'm con now I'm able to convert those over at a reasonable price point for even us. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, do you have? Uh, I think you have a little just quick demo yeah. you might be able to do it for us, right? Yeah. yeah. I have a I have a, I have a quick sample of just and it's it's sample. Um, it does have it so it does have a new desktop tool to download. You know, like anything else. Um, and for everybody who is comfortable in SSRS. Not everybody is, but everybody who is. So I'm going to share my whole screen here. Okay. It's going to look like SSRS. Mm -hmm. It's going to look like your report builder. So this is Power BI report builder. You see at the top of my screen, there it is. Yep. Pretty straightforward. Same canvas that we're used to. You get your data sources, parameters, you can bring in images, all that fun stuff. You can, you know, I see I have an image here. I have my data set. I, you know, not to mention I can come in here and I can run my data set and I can do my, I can still do my query editing. I know like most people like myself, this is a, to me, this is a test. I prefer to write the query in, you know, SQL management studio. It's a little faster, you know, you get all the IntelliSense and the, uh, all that stuff, but the data shows up. I can check it. I can look at it. I'm happy with it. You get the same expressions, all that stuff that you're used to in SSRS. And if you want to take it one step further, you still get that. I want to add some code and functions into the report itself and things that it doesn't do natively. So you can still build all that in. So, right. Right. And the biggest thing you'll notice is there's a publish button, right? So now we can publish and there we go. And if I flip over to my web, you're going to see, there it is, right? There's my sample report. And when it, when I mean, I'm just, just for sake of running it here, right? This is what it runs like. I got my paginated report just like uh, I want snappy. to. Mm -hmm. Quick, quick, quick. And I mean, yeah, I'm running in my in my my uh, builder here, but it, you know, it goes through. It just makes sample report headers, footers, very. I mean, quick professional reports that you can PDF, send out, and be done with. So this took you like to. two days to build, right? <laughs> I know I the mean, answer is. What did it take you like about 15 minutes? Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. And, you know, I got my report that I want and I can now I can I can export it. I can PDF it. I can subscribe to it. I can do those types of things. You can come in and set up a subscription just like you can in SRS. Right. All those things you can do that. So you can get the report in your email box on a Monday every week the way you want it. It just runs. And since it's yeah. running SQL, it's not doing any refresh in the background. It's not doing a load. It's just immediately running. Now, I, there, there's more to talk about here. There's more really cool stuff to play with. There is a couple of things I want to mention that we'll we'll talk about more the next time we, we chat, Mike. But sure. under data sources, you're going to notice another. This is a slight difference. There's two different data sources. There's a Power BI data set connection. So if anybody's using Power BI, you know what that means. I have a data set that's maybe pulling from an Excel spreadsheet, an O data feed, uh, a SharePoint list, what have you. I've done some measures. I've done some stuff with it. I've done it into Power BI and I publish it. Now I have that published there, but I also publish my data set. I can connect that data set in SSRS and now use that in SSRS. So in, in all reality, I can connect this directly to Project Online effectively. Right. It really right. only uses O data. But then there's one other thing around this. You'll notice, and this is this is a big topic for next time, that the third one down here, you're going to notice it says Dataverse. So those folks, you guys that are using Power Apps in the Dataverse, you can connect Power BI Premium or Power BI uh, Report Builder Premium per user directly to the Dataverse and run SQL off of it. So that's a that's a cool topic that we're going to get into. Yeah, uh, that's going to be huge in the future. Yeah, yeah. Both both of these things kind of came out 
right at the same time. So they're real big right. things. I mean, real cool stuff to play with. That's cool. Yeah. So just to recap for today, so the Power BI Premium on the per user subscription um, really helps democratize this um, really enterprise level Power BI type capabilities through uh, and help me out here. So you've got your paginated reports, you've got your SSRS that natively can import uh, right, your RD, multiple RDLs data that go sources. Right in. Yep. Yep. Multiple data sources. So it 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 really brings you know the enterprise class uh, Power BI type capabilities to the to the individual at just a very low price point, which is it's pretty significant. And 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 it really from a from a power, from a BI standpoint, business intelligence, it really rounds out what features you need. And I've been a big advocate of this for years. People want to have those interactive dashboards always. People used yeah. to use, compensate that with an Excel. Would always happen. It will continue to happen. However, just like they want the interactive dashboards, people still want to be able to print stuff. They want to be able to to PDF it in a very neat, always fashion. It always looks like this. It's just this way. And because of that, this was it was the, the a whole power Power BI in the cloud by itself for a lot of organizations. It was lacking. Now it's not. Right. Right. And, and so it brings this enterprise class capabilities to really the individual. And one of the things I'd like to just last point I want to make on this is that a lot of our customers, we deal with, you know, a lot of big enterprise organizations, some of the you know world's largest brands, they may have a reporting standard that um, or a business intelligence reporting standard that's not Power BI, right? It could be Tableau or Business Objects or R or one of these other type capabilities. Um, the, what we've seen over the last few years with regular Power BI is more and more people are interested in it at like the departmental level, like we said. So they have a specific use case and right. they need to do some reporting so that they can, you know, rounds out their 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 application or their their solution that they've built. This really extends that to the next level. Right. So you can really there, have there's no need to stuff. have this. There's no need to have like I have I have these reports that I want to put somewhere. Where do I want to put them? Well, let me go find an SSRS server, and then maybe they give me a folder on that thing to be able to put my reports, and I have the appropriate access. You just you, you can get a workspace, and or it's yours. the Tableau team, right? And have to put in right. requests and have somebody build something. Right. Now you can have an analyst or somebody that has some good Power BI chops to go in there and just do it right out right out of the out of the box. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, Matt, that's great. Next time we'll explore some of those other areas you were talking about a little bit more. I think that was awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.